rain, but uh, not much solar today. Might need an extra panel to get through this time. Morning. Nothing like having a little cup of coffee on the roof of your RV. If you use your RV for vacations, recreation, you don't live in it, uh, then maybe you want it, maybe you don't. Here's my reasons for adding extra solar. The one 100 watt solar panel just really wasn't quite enough for us. Uh, it won't fully charge the batteries uh, in a day, uh, especially if it's cloudy or whatever, it, uh, it won't do it. And I really hate to run the generator uh, unless I really have to. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna add a second panel over here, a 175 watt to go with the 100 watt, and that should be good enough to fully charge our two golf cart batteries. Okay, we're ready to start. Uh, this is what you're going to need. Um, I'm going to use this uh, 3M VHB tape. This works great, very sticky. That's going to stick to these brackets. Uh, they just screw on the back and that'll be the first thing I do is, is put the uh, brackets on. Yeah, this Loctite 290 is a thread locker. And I'll keep these from uh, vibrating loose, uh, in addition to the lock washer, of course. One of the things you want to be really careful with is the polarity of your wiring. You don't want to have it crossed up. First thing we want to do is check our voltage, just to be sure. It's an existing panel. Okay, so we're getting 20 volts output. This side is being on the positive side. So positive goes up on there. Okay, so we're going to start out with the red has to be positive and just have to cut these off and hook the positive up to the positive here. I'm actually going to do this before I position a panel, just so I make sure the lead lengths are long enough. Alright, it's going to go on the black one. It's going to go right just like that. Okay. This will push in until it clicks. See if you can hear it click. Okay, it clicked. And now we tighten that down really good. This is a strain relief. This pops in here. There's that connection. This one's connected over here. Okay. 22 volts. Good. And see what we get. Okay, uh, my cable's are a little short, but uh, I don't want to splice them, so it's going to be good enough. Um, that means I'll pull the panel in here even, about nine and a half inches right from the edge. Uh, it's nice and square. Now it's just time to mark it uh, where the brackets go, so when I put the tape on, it goes back into the same spot. Okay, we got the tape on all four sides. Now it's time to taper down. First one, here's the second one. Right, right there. Well, I guess that wasn't so hard. We got the new panel and the old panel. Last step is to put the die core sealant around the brackets, cover that all up, um, keep it a little more water resistant. But uh... All right, we got both panels going and that work is done. See now I'm pulling well 12 and a half amps uh, with the load on uh, from both solar connectors. Doing a 75. I should be able to get about 15 probably uh, later in the year when the sun's directly overhead. But it's still uh, it's 11 o'clock in the morning in California, so we're getting decent sun, and that will charge up the batteries pretty darn quick. Morning. Die car is all set up. You can see what it looks like. 
uh, tack down the wires and uh, also put some die car over the brackets just to keep water from seeping in, keeping the sun out. Anyway, I'm happy. I think it looked, looks pretty good. Having solar is only one half of the equation. The other one is conserving electricity, of course. So I'm going to do a quick little mod uh, video uh, showing how to reduce the current from your solenoid valve and a few other things. So that'll probably be next. So anyway, um, time to run. So I'll see you on the road.